Blessings, everyone. This is Misha. Wanted to come on super early this morning, <laughs> but I uh, didn't want the day to go by without posting this video. So I am doing it now. So thank you for those who are subscribed. Thanks for the viewers. Thank you for those who have liked and shared and commented. I really appreciate you. And I will just go with a quick prayer and then we'll get started. Um, this might be a little long, but We'll see how it goes. <laughs> so, Father God, I thank you for this new day. I thank you for every opportunity that you give me, Lord God, to be able to come before your, my brothers and sisters, your children, oh God, to be able to just share your heart and to um, have a call of a call to action. Um, I pray, Father God, that they sense your heart, Father God, and they know that this is a time, Father God, where we need to make some changes. So I um, just pray that this falls on good ears and that you get the glory out of it, Father. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so I'm very thankful to be in the name of Jesus and being able to bring this to you. Um, so yeah, basically I've been, you know, watching articles and watching the news, well, not really the news, but I get, um, I get articles and I get updates on, you know, what the laws are and the bans and who, who is putting in laws for abortions and who is passing this bill and who's trying to ban it and what have you, just to keep myself abreast of what's going on. And, um, it's amazing the things that I get and I felt like I just really wanted to come on and um, talk to you. Let me make sure my volume is up. Um, yeah, it's good. Yeah, just wanted to come on and talk to you because we have gotten to a point where we have to take action, even if it's just to pray. Praying is amazing and God hears our prayers and God will move certain things on his behalf through us praying. So, yeah. With this whole abortion thing, it is just getting so out of control. And that is actually the true pandemic. You know, a lot of people are not talking about that. You know, when we talk about the 62 million babies that already died and then the, the I mean, still thousands and thousands of abortions are being um, conducted daily, daily, you know, and that's just not in America, but all over the world. And there's so many troubling things going on. For instance, this is one article that really touched my heart about a 13-year-old girl who was pregnant, who got raped by her 14-year-old brother. And the father had to go to the judge, the magistrate, and ask them to please allow them to abort the 26 year, the 26 week old fetus that was in their belly, which was a baby. That was a full baby, 26 weeks. So that was terrible. That was terrible because to me, that baby could have been adopted. And I know everybody's situations are different. And I'm not in their family and I'm not in their shoes, but there's still a baby that lost its life because of a decision someone made, you know. And um, another instance that really touched my heart was. Um, a religious organization this month actually is erecting a billboard and in this billboard they have comments like good people have abortion and God knows and loves you so they're now combining God with abortion trying to say it's good trying to make it right they have different slogans that are going to be with this um, with this billboard and i'll include i'll include the link to it in the um description section so you can see how um un unsettling it is very unsettling to me because basically it's just justifying it you know it's saying well if god loves people who does abortions so what's the big deal let's just have abortions and it is a very big deal because it's murder then you have this long uh, article that I read about the different states. And each state now is trying to figure out 
their level of what type of abortions they want, what would they permit versus what they won't permit. And no one is standing up for the babies. I think there's only three states out of the 52 states that are banning abortions completely. That's not enough. We have to do better. We so have to do better, you know. And when you look at what's going on, it makes you really wonder, why is everyone okay with it? You know, and I did go to God and I, you know, was complaining <laughs> and fussing a little bit because um, it's just not right. No one is actually saying, you know, they have some people that are saying, but the people who are saying it's okay now are the religious organizations, are the, the government, you know, and they're making it seem like it's such an okay thing that for people that are coming, the young girls that are coming up, they're going to say, well, it's legal. Why not do it? No one is saying, let's help the young people live right and holy. No one is saying, you know, let's condemn people that are going around raping people, you know. So when I was talking to the Lord about this and um, venting, he sent me to... Uh, 1 John 2, 19, and reminded me, basically, it was just a reminder of the times that we're living in, and uh, the title of that particular section of the Bible is called Deception of the Last Hour, and it actually says, I'll just read a couple of, um, a couple of it for you, it's, I think it's 2, 19 through the 26th, it says, little children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard, that the Antichrist is coming. Even now, many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. And with that, of course, you know, comes with the deception and saying things that are untrue about Jesus. And basically, you know, it's telling you that, you know, Who's, who's the law? I'm going to just read the whole thing for you. Okay, so they went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out and they, that they might be manifest, that none of them were of us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. I have not written to you because you do not know the truth, but because you know the truth, and no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he who denies Jesus Christ? Now, Jesus is the Christ. He is the Antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. And then the rest of it says, let truth abide in you. That's the part I really wanted to get to because um, we have the truth in us. We have the truth in us. We know what's right. We know what's wrong. And we need to now go from inside of us, you know, seeking the face of the Lord and following what we know to be right, as opposed to letting the government or the religious organization tell us what's right or wrong. So... Uh, because they're making abortion seem like it's just an okay thing and it's not okay and it's murder. You know, the baby is in the womb, the baby is alive, and the baby also has a destiny and a purpose and is created by God for God. Psalms 127.3 says, Children are a gift from God, a gift from the Lord. They are a, a reward from Him. And so no matter what the situation is, that gift is a reward from God. Even in like the, you know, not so great circumstances, that baby can grow up and be the person that, that cures coronavirus or cures cancer, right? Oh, Ephesians 2.10 says, We are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. So what we're doing now in life is what God prepared us to do if we're walking in His will, you know. 
He had a plan. He has a plan for each and every one of us. And that's what the word tells us. And also the word says every good gift and every perfect gift come from above, coming down from the father of lights in whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Every good thing comes from the Lord. The Lord, I mean, God prepared everything. He designed everything from the beginning to the end and including every baby that is conceived. So I would just like to, uh, I do want to have a prayer. I just want to have a prayer and uh, I'm going to cover it. <laughs> See, I'm not looking at you while I pray. And, um, but yeah, I would just, you know, encourage you guys to pray, pray for healing of our nation, pray for, you know, women's hearts to be turned, you know, when they are faced with the dilemma of what should they do, you know, for them to have a heart for Christ to know that the thing to do is to keep your baby, you know, they have options, you have adoption, you know, there are a lot of uh, Christian adoption agencies where people can, um, you know, have their babies adopted or they can just trust God, you know, trust God, even in a bad situation, the best thing can come out of, you know, a not so great situation. But the key now is for us to stop you know calling bad good and calling good bad you know God is good everything he's created is good everything he does is good so we need to stay on the side of God which directs us and tells us the right thing to do and we all know the right thing to do is to keep these babies and let them live um and uh, to know that abortion is a murder. It is murder, okay? We need to stop sugarcoating it and calling it something else, you know, a way out, mm -mm, options, mm -mm. no, those are all fallacies that, you know, we're using as an excuse to do something that is totally against what God wants us to do. So I'm just imploring you to kind of pray and, um, be your sister's keeper. <laughs> if you know someone who's struggling, who, you know, in the in the throes of making a decision to abort, you know, be the person to say, no, 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 let me help you. You know, find a way to help one way or the other. There's always something that someone can do, you know, to help secure the future of a baby. So that's my prayer for us all today. And I'm going to say a quick prayer and then, um, I will sign off, but I thank you for listening. I thank you for watching. God bless each and every one of you, and um, I hope you have a wonderful day. Okay. Okay, Heavenly Father, I come before you, Lord, first to thank you for your goodness and your grace and your mercies, Father, especially for your mercies, oh God, that are new every day, and we need your mercies, Lord, like never before. As I come before you, Father God, I come in the name of Jesus, asking for fresh new mercies over our families, the government, Father God, and the nations. Father, we have gone too far, and we need your grace. We need your help. We need your mercy. And we need you to help turn this around. Father, we have gone too far and we have accepted sin as a way of life and failing to recognize, Father God, that this is unpleasing to you. Today, Father God, I pray for you to reveal yourself afresh and anew to all of us, oh God, to remember, allowing us, Father God, to remember your goodness, your love, that you loved us so much, Father God, that you gave your only begotten son to die on the cross for all of us, Father God. I pray, Father God, that you will help us to remember, oh God, that the sacrifice of the blood that was shed, oh God, for our, on our behalf, oh God, was for our freedom, for our forgiveness, for our healing, Father God, and for us to have access. Father God, I pray, Father God, that you will help us to have a true, free, new revelation of you, Father God. And as this revelation, oh God, comes upon us, Father God, that a deluge of repentance will fall upon the nations, Father God, that will have changed hearts, changed minds, and changed directions, oh God, away from sin, but falling into the Father's arms and into the love of Jesus Christ, so often 
finisher of our faith. Father God, I'm crying out for the unborn babies, Lord, today, and I'm praying that people will recognize that they are your creation and that you have a purpose and a destiny for each and every one of them, Father, that is conceived. Our nations and our government have grown cold to the statutes, oh God, that you have put in place and they have failed, oh God, to fight to save the unborn babies, but have used them, Father God, as part of a political agenda. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Have mercy, O oh God, on the innocent babies, O oh God, that were shed and continue to be shed daily. I pray, Father God, that you will help those that are pregnant, O oh God, to know that they can turn to you, O oh God, and that you will help them and that you will not condemn them because you love them. You love them so very much. I pray, Father God, that those who have had abortions, oh God, that they, Father God, would know that they can come to you because you love them and that you they don't have to live in shame. They don't have to live in fear or guilt, Father God, that your arms are open wide, ready to forgive them, Father God, and to restore them. I pray also, Father God, that you will renew our minds, that our minds, oh God, will be turned, our hearts will be turned, and our minds will be turned to you father that you father god will help us recognize that you are calling for us to live a holy and pure life that jesus christ is coming back father god for his bride and he's not coming back for a dirty bride he's coming back for a bride without spot or wrinkle i pray father god that you will help us to become our sister's keepers and help, oh God, a pregnant woman who is in need in any way we can, Father God, so that we can secure that baby's future as you have need for that baby to come onto the earth, oh God, to accept the calling that you have put on their life. Father God, I pray that you will help those in the government, Father God, recognize that they are guilty of killing innocent babies and that their involvement is not going unnoticed father god and that you are you are a god who sees all and knows all and will not be mocked father god i also pray for the religious organizations oh god that they will stand up and express your heart father god and no longer be silent while millions of babies are being killed. In the name of Jesus, Father God, I pray that your word says in 2 Chronicles 7, 14, that if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then you will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and you will heal their land. Father God, I pray in the name of Jesus, as we are your people, we are seeking your face. We are asking you to help us, Lord to turn back to you. We're asking you to help us, Lord, to turn back to our first love. We're asking you, Lord God, that we know for sure that you and you alone are our hope. You and you alone can turn things around, oh God. And only you, Father God, can heal our land. And only you, Father God, can secure the lives of the unborn baby. So I pray, Father God, that you would hear our prayers. And I pray, Father God, that this prayer father god will touch the hearts oh god of many and they also will pray and ask you lord for forgiveness ask you oh god for mercy because of um us going too far and i say this prayer in jesus mighty name amen amen so thank you again for watching this video i um I hope you can pray along with this. I hope you share this because this is a very serious matter. And um, this is all to, to help save the baby's lives. So have a great day. And um, I'll see you soon in the next video. God bless you.